On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we are here with the old Turo 2011 Dodge Durango, and the wheel bearing finally failed. What is going on guys? I am Watch J Argo, and like I said, today we are gonna replace the wheel bearing in the Dodge Durango. So some people were asking what you drive, and Darrell's car got wrecked a few months ago in one of the snowstorms, which was unfortunate. So he's been driving the Turo Durango ever since, because it was just sitting in the corner. So that's where it's been, and that's what he's been driving. And now about 3,500 miles in, I think. Somewhere close to that, yeah. About 100 plus miles a day. I think you drive about 100 a day. Yeah. Because, I mean, you still what? You still at night sometimes do dash. door dash and yeah. stuff like that. So there's a lot of miles put on the Durango. Well, that wheel bearing that maybe was like, we could feel like a hint of it failing has now turned into a pretty solid squeal. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So today we're gonna throw this thing on the lift and give it a spin. Hopefully we can find the squeal and swap out the failing wheel hub. So that's where we're at. The Durango's here. Uh, we're just ready to throw the arms under it and get it in the air. So let's do it. All right, we've got the Durango up in the air and we can hear a hint of a squeal when we can load this thing up right. Now when it's on the ground, we can really hear the thing scream when it's only when it's being turned. So we're just gonna keep working under the assumption it's this uh, wheel bearing hub on this thing. It is a replaceable hub. So let's get the wheel off and see what we can find. Oop. Turn it up. Man, this thing is hot. It's gotta be, it's gotta be this wheel. The lugs are hot, the wheel's hot. I think it was put a bunch of heat in the thing. Mm. So I sure hope this is what's failing. See the brakes. Looks like they got a little warm too. Not too warm now. <sighs> Sounds a little crunchy right there. I can't mm -hmm. tell if it's the brake or the hub. Oh. All right. I guess we keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the uh, brake caliper bracket off, and then we'll turn it again. And hopefully we can hear this bearing failing. If not. It might be the other side, but it sure seems like this side. Also, look at all that dirt. Mm -hmm. Oh man, there's some rust in there. Well, here's something interesting I've never seen before. We tried to pull the rotor off and the rotor is retained. BMW, as you know, loves to put a bolt right there. A lot of other manufacturers will stick a tin in there or something like that. Oh, hey, these have been replaced. Genuine Geomet. These are the coated ones too. I know where they got those rotors. We all know where these rotors came from but there is an O-ring on the wheel hub here that retains the rotor. And it's actually pretty hard to get off without a hook. Let's see if I can get, there we go. All right, that is the retainer. It looks like there's even a retaining groove in there. And then off comes the rotor. All right, let's give this thing a spin. Oh, yeah, it's, it's this. Listen to that thing. Crunchy. I don't think it could be more crunchy than that. All right, well now we gotta get the uh, axle out of here. So we're gonna pull off this monstrous nut. That should let us punch the axle out. And then it looks like uh, maybe some 14s or something like that to pull out the uh, actual hub assembly. Three bolts, the usual little triangle setup, and a 10 to pull out the wheel speed sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and lead with wheel speed sensor. Did any lights come on while you're doing this? Have you seen? Okay, okay. I was hoping we didn't destroy the wheel speed sensor. Sometimes they blow apart and then mm. done. Yeah, no, no, no lights, it's been clean so far. So. Good deal. It's time to go ahead and try to pull off our axle nut. See if this thing will get it. Turned all the way up. Yeah! Get it, back. yeah, did you see it looked like fire was coming out of that thing. Look at these threads, the threads are destroyed. Let's give this guy a little pop. Okay, axle's nice and free. All we gotta do is pull bolts out. There's no room for us to get back there without pushing the axle back, which we can, but it still doesn't really let us get in the big impact like we need. So I've got the wrench backed up with a wrench and we're gonna try to just, oh, thank you, Dodge. <laughs> I was not expecting that to go that well. Okay, so this is actually gonna work out. We're gonna be able to get the wheel hub off, considering the amount of like rust I'm seeing on things. Okay, try number two here. I'm gonna have to get under the car and do a push up. Here we go. Oh! The last one I was braced for war, and this time I don't have it. 
Yes. Yes. Hopefully after all this, we can get our ratchet wrench back up underneath there. And everything will be all right. Okay, we got all three bolts freed up. Now to get a ratchet wrench in there and get this thing apart. They are 15 on the back. This is probably a 32, but a 33 got the job done. Obviously it's gigantic and I can't find my 32. Um, wheel lugs were like seven eighths. That's the whole, the whole setup for this. All right, with a lot of fighting and both impacts, we got those three bolts out. Darrell was pushing in on the axle with a socket so he could get this like enough clearance for me to get the big impacts in there because it was just taking forever with a wrench. So we got it. Let's see if this thing will come off now. Not even a blip. This thing will not give up. You can see I've basically flattened the metal with the little sledgehammer and we're not getting anywhere. So we're on a bigger sledgehammer. Oh man, <laughs> this thing's in there. We had to take a break from beating that wheel hub with the sledgehammer. We're here at O'Reilly's to pick up the parts. Let's go. All right, we've got our new wheel hub here. We got some new bolts for the brake caliper bracket because everything on there was rusted. I did price the upright. The upright's like $600 and it's a Mopar part. So uh, we're gonna keep trying to get the old wheel hub out of this thing. Well, we've thrown in the towel on the little stuff. The map gas torch was not getting it done. Uh, I heated this thing and it's still smoking hot. So Jared's getting more fire out. Those nice glasses. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting way more fire out. We had to ruin the ABS sensor because it wouldn't come out. Uh, it's This thing's just rusted 100% together. So hopefully with a bunch of fire, we can solve the rust problem. You should have tons of gas. These things have never really been used since they were filled. He's just gonna end up cutting it in half here in a minute. I've also soaked it with like five rounds of knocker loose on both sides. This won't go. I tried heating the back of the upright where he's at for probably 20 minutes with that map gas torch and we could not get it red. So big torch is the answer. Get it Milwaukee. It's unbreakable. I had my uh, Milwaukee M12 tire inflator yeah. hooked to my front driver's side tire the other day. <laughs> and you drove I walked up. around the back side of the truck and got in and I heard a Pop, 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 pop. I was like, oh no. But it's still good. Got out, turned right on, and it, it yep, still works perfectly. It was still airing up the tire the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to turn that upright red. A lot of metal. Yeah, I, I need a rosebud, but I don't have one here. Oh, roll it. Yeah. Getting hot now. Look at that. Boy, is what used to be the heavy up there. Yeah, it's just burning down. Turn the dude. Yeah, it's not, not Turn the abnormal. The way. Yeah, give it a little massage and it'll. It helps. I just mean them like resting to it, like. Oh yeah. Yeah. Super common. Well. Locker loose. Yeah. It's rubbed together pretty good. Yeah, it sure has. Still hasn't moved. Gotta hit it harder than Will Smith and Chris Rock on stage. <laughs> Oh, we 
we should probably uh, stop, stop, stop. The ignition's off. Just gonna blow an airbag? Yeah. There it goes. There it goes. All right. Here's a. Here's my pry version. You get the yeah. If you can get the other side, that'd be good. If, there, dude. We it's opened all the way up now. No, don't do that to that screwdriver. Dude, I uh, put you this have real pry bar. Look, man, I put it behind there earlier and beat it to death. I didn't show it on camera, obviously, <laughs> and it was fine. Oh, it's There it goes. It's free. I hope it's the bad up. We're really just kind of assuming. The unfortunate part about this is now this one's destroyed, so it's definitely bad. So oh, we, yeah. we can't just spin yeah. it to see if it was the bad one. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that ABS sensor is literally a melted pile of plastic. How's it sound? Well, yeah, we it, it, it sounds great either sounds way. Great. So. Sounds nice. Well, you better clean up the inside of that one. Yeah, I got my wire brush. Just trash keeps falling out of it though. Right in our eyes. And we gotta bend the shield back into shape because nobody sells it. And put some grease. Yeah. Where the hub meets the knuckle. Anti-seize. <laughs> Anti-seize. Yeah. And we need a powered wire brush for this. I got an air one over there, but we don't really have enough air to run it. You don't have a granule? Uh, there might be a wheel for the Milwaukee. Look at all this rust. There is built up scale on the upright. That thing should be fine. It's toasty. Well, look at that. After a ton of work with the wire wheel and a little bit of work with a can of black spray paint, the upright is no longer gonna sit here and rust. So. We went ahead and solved that problem, and these threads are looking pretty reasonable. I think that's nice. And, uh, what, of course the hub's out. Can't hear it, but... I mean, whatever happened, it's melted. Oh, it's still hot, hot! It's so hot still. Uh, Durrell took the dust shield outside, spray painted it black, because obviously we can't get a replacement in any reasonable amount of time. And now we're down a wheel speed sensor that O'Reilly's doesn't have in the store. It's a hub thing because they probably don't end up needing too many of these. So we're kind of at a standstill here. Oh, well, we got time. We can make it to the hub. So uh, I guess we're going to go try to fetch a wheel speed sensor for this thing, put the hub back in and start putting this thing back together. We do know the traction light had already turned on because the ignition was on while we were beating on it. So eventually we decided we might as well pull the battery because we were hitting it hard enough that I was like, I mean, you guys know what I was like, the airbag might pop. And that's the last thing I want happening on this job. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put anti-seize in our race here. And when we put the wheel speed sensor back in, we'll put a little, well, maybe, maybe not anti-seize on that. It is a hall effect sensor. I don't wanna mess it up. So a little bit of grease in there. And hopefully that keeps this stuff from growing together in the future. So uh, we're gonna try to get a new axle nut too, because the old axle nut looks pretty beat for what it is. Paint's closed. Cool. Alright, I think we've got everything to make this thing run tonight. Obviously the wheel speed sensor was the most important part. And uh, they don't sell the nut without the axle for these things. So we had to come up with a plan. If you guys need a nut for your Durango, it's a 7 8 ID. And hopefully the OD fits inside the CV, we don't actually know. But the uh, nut is M22 by 1.50. So. Hopefully this works. It was all we could come up with other than buying a whole axle. All right, hub time. We should have probably test fit this before we made our last run into town. Come on, girl. It's gonna fit though. I, I believe in it. As long as the splines line up, and they do. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grease the splines up. Let's see how this one runs. Oh, so smooth. So smooth. I'm still not gonna ruin those. Those are good gloves. Fair These enough. gloves are free too. Okay, can't argue. Oh, Kyle just showed up one day and was like, you want some gloves? I was like, yeah. And these ones are amazing. I like that they've got texture grippies. 
and they uh, they really work. Mm -hmm. Kind of surprising how good they actually are. Probably my favorite one. Somebody the other day was asking in the comments what they are. Mill wise, I think it's about a nine mil. It's not like a, it's not super heavy like an eleven or anything like that. So grease time. All right, no more rust. Rust preventative. That's what we were going for here. Man, we got everything but new bolts for this because nobody, they don't even sell these bolts. So we got close to having a new everything on here. There we go. Boom. Wow. That's a good look. If I've ever seen one. All right, now for the fun part where we have to pull the CV back and slide the bolts in and then tighten those down by hand, but I think we're pretty much good. It's time to reinstall the brake rotor. I'm still kind of surprised everything fits. First try. We haven't done anything crazy. All right, so there's a little rib in here for this o-ring to fall into which is pretty cool definitely the first time i've ever seen one of these that's just fully retained with a rubber o-ring now we've got it all cleaned out we, we cleaned everything as well as we possibly could and this thing should it's getting some grease it's getting a little bit of grease here of course brand new uh brake bolts i feel like that was a nice touch pretty excited about that here we go they're gonna be much better. Cool. So, this should drop right in now. And we're ready to put the wheel back on and fire it up, take it for a test drive. Hopefully, if everything goes right. Oh, sensor went right in. Just like it should have the first time. We should be good to go. So, uh, if you need to know how that sensor routes, it goes over the upright like this. There's a Christmas tree that goes into there. This little rubber piece goes into here, hangs out on the brake line, or actually, even farther down, there's a ton of these things. Let's see, this one goes here, and then you can figure out your positioning for everything else as you go. So, just kind of twist it in. There's one. And there we go. We're gonna set this thing on the ground, torque the wheels, the wheel, hook the battery back up and take it for a test drive. Whoever changed these brakes, all the brakes are recent on this thing. You can tell the pads are like flawless. The rotors are full thickness there. I mean, there's no lip or anything. Uh, they use the dustiest pads that money could buy, I guess. <laughs> Is there a checkbox for extra dust? It's fixed. Yeah, yeah, because it was squeaking if you even drove like that far. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah for sure. All right, good. Uh, brake. Hard. I like it. I like it. I like it. Guys, Durrell didn't know this thing has the... This is the Unicorn Durango with the 5.7 under the hood. Dude, wide open throttle. Make a pull. <laughs> oh, yeah. Doesn't it have some power? It does. Man, it's pretty funny. Whew. Not bad. Hey, the GPS pulled the time down. Cool. Oh, cool. Oh. All right. Well, I'm saying this one is fixed, ready to head out the door. Well, I guess, I mean, you have to drive home, so that's the only reason it had to get done today. Well, the Durango is back on the road better than ever with a brand new wheel hub. Obviously, it was something that was probably very much needed. 118,000 miles on the thing now. And we knew, like, we started hearing, like, the first rumblings from it at, like, 112,000 miles. A long time ago. I bought that with, like, 112, 113, something like that. So it has some miles on it before it actually had a real issue. It became, like, a, a real drone and then a squeal at low speeds. And this was a massive, massive job. Of course, we had uh, this penciled in to be about the normal 28 minute wheel hub job. You know, uh, pull the wheel off, take out the three bolts, hit it five times with the hammer, it falls out. No big deal. That is not what happened today. It took four or five hours and just like 20, 30 minutes of heating it with the two torches. I mean, we sat there with both torches running for a very long time and then just kept beating on it. I mean, we must've hit that thing with the sledgehammer until <laughs> I can't believe the upright didn't have problems. Anyway, it had to be done. A lot of rust was built up in that thing. So we cleaned all that up, painted it, grease, anti-seize on the bolts, should be good. Hopefully the next person doesn't have any of these issues to deal with. 
That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. Watch TRGO.com for cool shirts. Not like this. And please, like, share, subscribe. Do whatever you want to do. And I'll talk to you next time. As you guys know, I took this thing out and was ripping it this weekend. I had a great time. We got to ride it for about four hours before it broke. Unfortunately, I had stopped because I took it through a ton of water. I had the water up to, you know, here and the water kind of filled the radiator and it was steaming, which made me wonder if maybe it caused an issue with the radiator. Of course it didn't. So uh, while I was checking that, I took a look under here and noticed that that bolt on the new gusset backed out and it's still in there. It's still holding everything in place, but it did break after just four hours. So I need to run that back in and put a nut on it. Obviously, I didn't think that could back off because it has those nylock nuts on it and they were put on with the impact, but apparently it just needed to be buried. I mean, we had a lot on it, but it needed to be way tighter than that. So uh, now we're back here. I'm just gonna slide the bolt out the back, flip it around, put it in the front. The other one didn't come out, so I want it to match, and then we'll put a nut on there and absolutely bury it. And uh, this thing should be good, good to go, because other than that, it was an absolute champ. And I'll show you a couple of the clips right now. I mean, we are climbing vertical stuff like that, and I mean, the X3, it makes it all easy.